my second video. Today, I'll be ranking oil One Piece arcs. Now, you might not know this, but I find One Piece eh, average. You know, it's not my favorite. You know, it's not my least favorite. It's a fun series to tag on to, and you know, I love the community. So hopefully, you know, I can you know sway some views and make people angry at me. Alright, without further ado, let's get into this. So, first, first up is Zoro. Now, I think Zoro, among, among the community, you know, what's this thing? I think it's a very much appreciated part. You know, I think because of the new, because of the new world standards of having you know, 50 plus chapters, I think Zoro would be nice. Quick replenish. Especially after the quite repetitive landscape of Dressrosa, I think definitely in terms of artistic style, Zo was very, you know, comforting, very exhausting with its style. I think another benefit to Zo was that it was a great, you know, ex you know exposition dump with, you know, the introduction of road polyglyphs as also one of the most highly rated moments of One Piece Rosa Donna is say. The main thing that can take it down or you can maybe take it up for people is that Sanji's storyline with his family began. You know, I have never been a fan of Sanji's storyline but you know some people are Sanji's Sanji fans like SB0 damn bastards. But other than that, I would put so in the A. Yes. And I also have the introduction of the introduction into the new world with the third page. Next on this is Whole Cake Island. A very polarizing arc to say the least. I think you know I've heard a lot of people compare it to Dress Rosa in the size of scale of characters with the introduction of the Charlotte family. I think when we first enter Whole Cake Island, it definitely started as a stereotypical One Piece arc. It did remind me a lot of Paradise arcs in the fact that we got to actually explore Toto Land for a bit, but you know, during the middle part, I think, you know, when it started during the seducing wars, that's when it slowly started to stall, you know, Everything from the seducing woods to the wedding, I think, was you know a hard time as a reader. Lucky for me, I was able to binge read it because I was I was only I'm only been a fan of One Piece for the last two years, so that was a better fit to me. But I think what makes Whole Cake Island stand out most is Charlotte Katsuguri. I think he had probably one of the best fights of. One Piece definitely of the new world in terms of standards, and I think that was very greatly helped by the anime. And I think you know he's very. I think he's the best. You know, I think he's better than Blue in terms of villain. I like his backstory, and I thought you know he's he's not a very typical villain. One Piece villain in the sense that he's evil just for the sake of being evil, such as you know Rob Lucci and Don Flamingo. And I think, you know, it was a great metaphorical use by Oda with the Mochi copying the copying Luffy's mother. So I think, you know, because of the stalling and that, you know, the Kazakuri fight was so, you know, split up and that I also really hate Sanji and the whole German 66. I thought that was a useless storyline and I thought, you know, I didn't need a Sanji backstory. I don't think we need necessarily a backstory for every One Piece character, especially the Storrits, you know, I like to have some ambiguity, but you know, you say that, but we're most likely going to get a Zoro backstory in Wano, but just because the, the category fight was so late in the game, I think he would have helped them if it was longer, so I'd put it in B. Next up, is Dressrosa. Dressrosa, of course, 112 chapters, 
the bane of the One Piece community in the sense of how long it was. I think for Oda, this is revolutionary in a sense of you know what he was trying to accomplish. You know. I think you know, at some point he you know, exceeded extremely well. You know, he's not being Signal Peaks type story, the best type story to date. But just the amount of characters in Jester's that were introduced. Maybe you know, it did felt very annoying to read as it was just most of these characters that were introduced in the coin team were basically useless and were just a waste of time and a waste of panels in that sense. You know, you had the Kelly Funk brothers. No one cares about the Kelly Funk brothers, they were useless. Oh look, they betrayed Luffy because of the gold, yeah, whatever. And then you also had Cat Cat Tie Man, oh yes, yeah, same as Cat to Hand, the bounty hunter who, you know, took down Impel who took down Impel Down Prisoner Gold. Maybe we should put him up on the ground. I think a lot of a lot of a lot of gestures are put in cut out, but you, know, you also have the positives of Don Flamingo. You know, Don Flamingo is widely recognized as one of the best One Piece villains and one of the best Shonen Jump villains in this recent decade, but I've never truly liked him. I thought, you know, he didn't, his backstory and, you know, his character, I just never, I never thought he could live up to the likes of Crocodile and so, but a lot of people like him. And maybe that's because of Crocs and Lord's Law's background, which is, you know, heavily focused on, you know, sad moments of war, but again, I never cared about Law in the first place. So, setup for Don Flamingo and the whole and we got the we got the alliance between Law and Luffy which has you know been been the main focus of the New World arcs and so I think you know in terms of a setup arc I think you know it did a great job of what it was but with a standalone arc I think it definitely missed some beats I think Caesar as a villain was underwhelming I think that like when Luffy and crew lost to him by just, you know, running out of oxygen. I thought that was stupid. I thought it could be his his power could be, you know, used better or Luffy, you know, I thought Luffy in terms of mental skills could have, you know, improved a bit. But, you know, we also had the in reintroduction of Smoker and I am a massive smoker fan, you know. And I bet that is one of my favourite arts and that's because of Smoker. I think He's a great, he's the greatest character into the story because he is a man who, you know, he is a man who balances on, you know, on, you know, duty and personal ideology. And I think, you know, his conflict with that idea, especially with teaming up with pirates, take out, take down a greater, 
a greater threat is a very interesting dynamic. Therefore, I will also put this in B. Now, 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 now. In power down. Now, people say, in power down, oh, that's straight B. But for me, in power down is the goat. People are like, Badger, why is in power down the goat? And I say, because it's fucking hilarious. Now, people say, and you say, oh, yeah, comedy's all well and good, but One Piece is a battle shown. F- f- is a battle shown, you know. In the end, the One Piece is a battle shown. And I say, yes. But it's also, you need funny moments in One Piece because, you know, it's a ridiculous story, like, right? ridiculous powers, ridiculous characters. I think Impal Down was really the height of Oda's comedy, and I think people say Long Ring Long Land was the height of Oda's comedy. I said, well, I don't read the fucking, I didn't read the fucking manga, right? so I say Impal Down it. And they didn't just have comedy, it had hype. I mean hype, 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 hype. You had the reintroduction of Crocodile, of Buggy, Buggy, of Mr. Free, of Mr. Two, of Mr. One. You also had the introduction of the Knights of the Sea, Jinbei. And you had the introduction of two of my favorite characters of the series, Magellan and Hannibal. I think Hannibal is my favorite comedic character of the One Piece universe. Now, his dynamic with Magellan has never been recreated in One Piece or in any other Shonen job. And what made me love this art the most was the pacing, the action, and the character stories. Oh, and I also got the introduction of the main trans man in Van Kong. And I think, you know, this was, this was probably the, it was, it used, used the Ennis Lobby effect of not exploring an island whilst also exploring an island. The main purpose of, of Impal Down was not to explore it, but was to, re- was to rescue Ace, which was similar to Ennis Lobby, though we still were able to explore both both places in question thoroughly. And I think we also had, with, we also got to see very unique designs, especially for the mythical bees such as the griffin and the manticores. And I think that just heightened, you know, the amount that you know, we had all these characters from Alabaster and they're just running around shitting themselves because they're being scared by a bunch of blue gorillas and I enjoyed that. And I think Magellan, I think I think Magellan and Luffy, it was a great fight because Luffy knew that he could never win uh, even though he tried and tried and tried and I think Magellan is the only undefeated character in One Piece so far he also, and you know, no, don't forget he also beat Blackbeard, yeah, Blackbeard was also in the dark, and he got absolutely one-shotted by Magellan. If it wasn't for Shiryu of the rain, stupid character, he would have been dead. Why, 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 Shiryu, did you let him live? But because of Crocodile and him saying, Come on, Luffy, let me on. You need me. I thought it just made this arc amazing, you know. Him, you know, learning, having more mysteries about Crocodile with his past, you know, him being a female. Yes, I said being a female. There is no might, there is no maybe, it is definite that Crocodile is a female, and I support the sweet, 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 sweet hentai of female Crocodile. That is why I will put Impel Down at S tier. Now, 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 then now, we have Jam Island. Oh my god, what a fucking boring arc. If it wasn't for Dr. Helix flashback, then it would be a D. If there's anything good about it, you know, his sacrifice, his speech, probably top five memorable speeches in One Piece. 
and he was put in such a rubbish arc. Rubbish villain. A rubbish plot line. And rubbish characters. You know, Marvel did become, you know, a great character in his cover stories. But other than that, it did nothing for any of the characters except for showing Nami hasn't taken any of the shots. I know all my American fans can relate. So I will put this just because of the backstory in a suit. And also, I hate Chopper. I think he would be a nice medium rare steak with some curry verse sauce. Now, we have the most favorite art, I believe, in One Piece. NS Lobby. Now, NS Lobby, it was just both Water 7 and NS Lobby, I think you could probably put, you know, put those two together in the same art because they just went, you know, seamlessly joined together with the C Train art. People still dispute to the day which arc the Sea Train was in, but because it just seamlessly joined the two together, I think, you know, we'll just consider it, you know, both, it's in it, you know, to be, to the Sea Train to be both in one center and in something. But in this lobby, I think the main thing we have to talk about are CP9 and the fight. CP9, a great set of characters, a great dynamic between the CP9 members. You know, my favorite art is Jabra. I think Jabra was a great addition. I think people criticize CP9 for being such a comedic gang. But, you know, Rob Lucci was just, you know, a miserable bastard who was like, yeah, I'm gonna, live, I'm gonna kill Luffy because I just kill because I'm a sociopath with no friends. I think we needed everyone else in CP9 to have a comedic register so that we would the audience wouldn't feel so isolated from these villains. I've, and you know, we also had the most memorable speech in Anaswabi with I Want to Live by Robin. And my, 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 my god, do I love Nico Robin. Even though she doesn't really shine in his arc in terms of battles, which she hasn't done since, you know, Skype here, I think you know, this is one of the greatest moments. You know, her constantly being abused by Spandam, but you know, grabbing on to the to the sides of the path of the teeth. You know, you just you just you, you, I was shouting at my screen for Luffy to get his ass to Robin. And you know, another memorable scene was the burning of the World Government flag and big up Soga King with his black Kamoto. I think Usopp's development was definitely it made me love Usopp. It made it made me it made Usopp my second favourite straw hat because of Soga King. But now we must talk about the fights. And the fights were amazing. I think Zoro you know